Hello everyone, my name is Anthony, aka Tomo14, and today I will be bringing you my team builder for week 5 of the National Exhibition Syndicate when I face CEO Cadella, coach of the Cleveland S. Cavaliers. We're trying to rebound after the tough loss at the hands of a 6 0 sweep by a superior, which unfortunately ended our undefeated season so far. We are 3 and 1. We're still in a pretty good position. We are in fifth place in the standings as of right now. We have a ways to go to catch up to first place, which is 5 0 with a differential of plus 19. So we have a long way to go in order if we want to catch up to them. But for the meantime, we are here against the Cleveland S. Cavaliers. I decided this week, in case you guys forgot what my entire team is, my team of 11 Pokemon are on the top with Manaphy, Skullaphy, Needlequeen, Yuxi, Hitmontop, Gorgeist, Cavalion, Blissey, Drudigan, Lantern, and Mega Gardevoir. While my opponent's team is Victini, Breloom, Vaporeon, Neoking, Spiritomb, Miltank, Scizor, Thunderous Therian, Granbull, Armaldo, and Mega Absol. I won't go too much into detail about my team. A slight overview of my opponent's team. Victini, one of the best Pokemon in the Draft League format as they can go physical with V-Create, Bolt Strike, U-Turn. Can run Choice Scarf, can do a special set, can be a mixed attacker, can pull up a defensive set pretty effectively. And you have Breloom, solid Pokemon with Technician, can run Technician Mock Punch, has access to Spore, has priority with Mock Punch, can do Poison Heal with Toxic Orb. Just an overall good Pokemon in general. Vaporeon, nice bulky water type, a good check to my Manaphy. Has access to recovery with Wish, can Toxic, can Scald, Ice Beam, can run Baton Pass to get other Pokemon in safely. Nido King, a very fearsome wall breaker with access to Sheer Force, which can decimate any team that's not prepared for it. Combination of Sludge Wave, Earth Power, Ice Beam, Fire Blast, Thunderbolt, the coverage goes on and on. It's no different from my Needle Queen except Needle Queen. Needle Queen is more bulky. Needle King is more offensive. Next, he has this Spiritomb. Nice bulky spin blocker, but to um, potentially block me from um, spinning away my hazard with my Hitmontop. Has access to Will O Wisp. Has priority with Sucker Punch. Can be a Pursuit Trapper. Can run a special set with Calm Mind with Dark Poles or Snarl, stuff like that. Miltank, another good Pokemon with three good abilities, with Thick Fat, can take fire and ice attacks for his team, has Scrappy to deal with, can take on my Gorgeist, and has access to Sap Sipper to take those grass attacks. If need be, is also a good Stealth Rocker, very fast, has access to recovery with Milk Drink, can Heal Bell, can Thunder Wave, stuff like that. Scizor, another good Pokemon with access to more priority with Bullet Punch, can be a bulky U-Turner, can U-Turn, can be a bulky Defog set, and has a very good response to my Mega Gardevoir in general. Thunderous, Thunderous Therian, very strong Pokemon, base 145 special attack, base 101 speed, can do nasty plot, can be an agility sweeper, can run both as a double dance set, can do physical with U turn, superpower, all that sort of shenanigans. Granbull, a good fairy type, can go offensive or defensive with play rough, can be can also be a heal bell user, access to Thunder Wave, can play rough, can earthquake. So it has good solid coverage overall. Almaldo, not really known in league format. Just it's just there as is Rapid Spinner, just trying to get away hazards on side of the field, has access to knockoff, stuff like that, but it's not really that much of a defining factor on his team. And lastly, he has that Mega Absol, which is a very potent threat to my team, can run Swords Dance, has access to Sucker Punch, can knock off Play Rough for my Drudigan or my Hitmontop, can run a mixed set with Fire Blast for my Cavalli and Ice Beam for my Needle Queen, stuff like that. But it is kind of frail, and I'm trying to hopefully kind of pick it off 
midway, so we'll see how that works out for me. <clears throat> but moving on to the team that I'm going to be bringing in this battle. First Pokemon you see here, surprisingly, it is not Skullipede. You see Crimson here, the Trudigan, rocking the Assault Vest and Sheer Force this week with Dragon Claw, Gunk Shot, Fire Punch, and Sucker Punch. Dragon Claw here, good overall stab attack as his resist to Dragon Claw is Fire is um his Scizor which resists Dragon Claw and his Grand Bull which is immune to Dragon Claw. Gunk Shot deals with the Grand Bull and two hit KOs even after it intimidate, even physically defensive, and Fire Punch one hit KOs. Um Scizor if it's not a physically defensive variant, which I don't think he will be. Sucker Punch lets me Gives me priority, lets me do some damage to that Victini. It does about 50, about close to 50% to a Victini if it's not physically defensive, if it's like an offensive Scarf set or a mix set, whatever. Assault Vest is here as Dredigan gives me a better switch in to his Victini. It can it resist Victory, resist Bolt Strike. Assault Vest is here in case he wants to bring a mixed variant of Victini with Glaciate, then I can I can take that no problem. I don't really care much about speed on my Drudigan, but I do I do have a little bit of speed on this Drudigan here as just in case he wants to if he does bring that Grand Ball and he runs enough speed on his Grand Ball to outspeed an uninvested Drudigan, then I put a little bit of speed there to outspeed a speed creeping Granville. So I can 2 a KO Granville with Gunk Shot before a 2 a KO Drudigan with Play Rough. So that's my Drudigan set. Now moving on to my second Pokemon here, making its debut for the main Red Clusters, I give you my Illuminati, my Lantern. Now my Lantern here is my direct response to his Thunderous Therian. As thanks to Volta's Orb, he cannot bolt switch as freely as he wants to. He cannot Thunderbolt as freely as he wants to. And Lantern also resists its hidden power flying. And then I can Ice Beam it or whatever. Um, as for the moveset itself, rocking leftovers on this set with Skull, Ice Beam, Volt Switch, and Toxic. Skull for general stab, get po hopefully get some burns on the Scizor. Get burns on the. Excuse me, one moment. There. <laughs> Sorry about that. But in any case, Skull lets me get potential burns on the Scizor. Lets me deal with the Victini and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, man. He's all these calls. But anyway, um Scald lets me hit the hit the Victini, hit the Needle King, hits the Scizor, potentially gonna burn, hits the Armaldo, Ice Beam hits the Breloom on the switch and the Thunder Hysterion. Volt switch for momentum. And Toxic is there to wear down his Vaporeon, wear down his Potentially wear down the mill tank if he doesn't bring heal bell, which I pretty much assume he will be. Wears down his spiritum as it really doesn't lack a sort of recovery outside of leftovers and pain split. Um, EV spread is just max defense, max special defense, rest in HP, as it does have a pretty high HP stats it is. So I figured bulk up its um, defense and physical, physical defense and special defense so I can take hits a little bit better, leftovers for passive recovery. And it's pretty much how pretty much my lantern's role is to switch in on Thunder Hysterion and hopefully I can block some some Thunderbolt to eat those up and hopefully recover some health. So that's my lantern. Moving on to my third Pokemon here. I am bringing Manaphy this week's Splash Splash with the Canberry Tail of all three attacks. Don't want to make the same mistake as last week as I was way too passive. In my approach, so I want to keep the momentum going as much as possible. So, pretty standard set here with Tail Glow, Skull, Ice Beam, and Energy Ball with the Rakan Berry. Let's me take a super effective electric attack from either 
a Bolt Strike or Thunder Victini, or a Thunder Hysterion Thunderbolt or Volt Switch. Um, Skull for Stab, again, potentially get burned in the Scizor, stuff like that. Ice Beam lets me deal with Hits the Thunderous, Hits the Breloom, Hits the Nido King. And Energy Ball is here specifically so I am not walled by that Vaporeon. I can pretty much set up on the Vaporeon, but I'm pretty sure he might bring Toxic. Just Toxic Stall to wear down my map to the point where it can't effectively wall break, but I am. I'm pretty much like. I'm prepared somewhat for it, but. I kind of like gotta take a bit. I gotta take some more chances. I can't be as a passive as I was in the past. Running max special attack, max speed with Tim and Nature. Hopefully, a speed tie with the Victini. And. Yeah, just, just so I can take. I can hopefully outspeed a non choice for Victini, hit it with a skull before it can um, low strike me or try to U turn out, stuff like that. So that's my Manaphy set. Now we move on to my next Pokemon, another Pokemon making its debut for the main Red Cultures. We have Eddie Gordo here, the Hitmontop, with a very unique set, sort of, with the Rosalie Berry with Counter, Close Combat, Stone Edge, and Toxic. I am not running Rapid Spin on this team as I don't really need Hazard Removal as he only has Stealth Rocks. He has no he has no Spike Centers on his team, so it's not Hazard Removal isn't really much of an issue for me this week as it, it more Hazard Control is more detrimental to him as it is to me as he does have the Victini. He has the Thunderous Darien, which are both weak to rocks. But he also has that Mega Absol with Magic Bounce, so I have to be I have to be careful around that. But nonetheless, this Hitmon top is my um, check to Mega Absol. And basically, this set is designed to take on Mega Absol if he does bring Play Rough. As the Rosalie Berry will let it take less damage. I can retaliate with a close combat and knock out the Mega Absol. The same thing with taking a super effective hit from Play Rough from a Grand Bull. I retaliate with Counter and Goodbye Grand Bull. Um, Stone Edge um, catches Victini and Thunderous trying to switch in on a close combat. And Toxic is to wear down the Vaporeon, the Spiritomb, stuff like that. Running a physically defensive spread, max HP, max defense, rest and attack. Just try to take those physical hits as best as I can for this week. As it gives me another backup solution to Victini at the same time if my Crimson, if Dreadigan deals down pretty early. So this is my backup option. Now moving on to my fifth Pokemon here, we have Eggland's best, the Blissey, running Chopperberry with Softwell, Toxic, Flamethrower, and Stealth Rock. Now, I was debating this set for a little bit, simply because um, Blissey is pretty passive, but it worked out pretty well the last time I brought it. But this week is going to be a little bit more difficult, simply because I do have to deal with a lot of physical threats on his team, and I figured I needed to get Stealth Rock on something on my team. So I figured why not put it on Blissey, try to wear down the Victini, wear down the Thunderous, and I get rid of the Mega Absol, that would be great. So I'm not so pressured as to pick, a t pick and choose when I get up my rocks. Um, Toxic to wear down the Vaporeon, wear this down the Spiritomb, Miltank, etc. Flamethrower is here, <clears throat> lets me deal with the Breloom, but especially lets me deal with the Scizor. As Scizor does have somewhat of a free switching, and I do not want to give Scizor any opportunities to deal any heavy damage. So in my Blissey, I am running Chobbleberry over Leftovers on my Blissey, just in case he decides to bring Bandage Superpower Scizor, which normally does one-hit KO my Blissey, but in this case it does not. So, the combination of uh, the combination of Chobbler lets me live a superpower, 
I retaliate with a flamethrower, though. I could potentially run fire blasts as a better option. As if I can get Scizor weak enough and he's not running if he's not banded, he's like a um if he is banded, it'll be a lot easier because I can wear it down more frequently with the rocks damage, but if he's like a SD Roost set, that could be an issue. But I do have ways I do have some ways to deal with Scizor as a whole. Um as for my EV spread, just running max defense, max special defense, or old nature, rest with HP. Just try to take those hits, recover with soft oil, and then wear things down with toxic and flamethrower to the point that my other teammates can have an easier job against them. And now moving on to the last Pokemon on my team, I am bringing Athos the Cabalion. And for the first time, it is Choice Scarf Cabalion. With Close Combat, Iron Head, Zen Headbutt, and Stone Edge. Um, close Combat and Iron Head is Necessary Stab. Uh, well, close, com yeah, close Combat lets me deal with the Mega Absol and the Mill Tank. Iron Head's here for the Grand Bull and the Armaldo. Zen Headbutt lets me hit the Breloom, the Nido King. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And Stone Edge is here to take on the Victini and the Thunderous. Therian, as Victini does resist Close Combat, Iron Head, and Zen Headbutt. Stone Edge is a 2 hit KO on Victini, no matter what. I'd have to pray I hit Stone Edge before I can jump to that conclusion. As for the EV spread here, I am running max attack. 204 speed with a Jolly Nature lets me outspeed a Scarf Thunderous Therian. And which is basically the fastest Pokemon he could put a Choice Scarf on, with the rest being put into HP for some slightly more bulk. My Cabalion's job is to revenge kill a weakened Victini, which, as Victini is not faster than Cabalion, even if it is Choice Scarf, um, Stone Edge does about 51 to 63 percent to a Victini from full. So if I get those rocks so that I can pressure him right off the bat, I can get rid of it one time. Same thing applies to the Thunderous. Thunderous is also to a KO by Stone Edge. Um, Iron Head lets me hit the Grand Bull. If he's not defensive, I believe it's still like close to a 2 a KO if he's offensive Grand Bull. So my Cabalion's job here is just to be a quick revenge killer, try to work, try to hit things as fast as hard as possible, while at the same time trying to weaken stuff for a potential late game sweep, hopefully with my Manaphy, or wearing things down with my Dredigan, or hitting on top intimidating stuff and whatnot. As for other Pokemon I could have brought in this battle, I considered Scolipede at first, but even after a speed boost, if he is Scarf Victini, Skull P will still be slower, and it will die to a V Create or a Zen Headbutt. I do not want to risk take that risk. Um, I could have brought Nido Queen, but Nido Queen gets bought by Nido King if he is um, Scarf, and I bring Scarf. He's faster, Earth Power the other me, and then if I try to revenge kill the Nido Queen, Nido King. You can switch into one of his other defensive mons here, but it's not really something I wanted to take a risk on. And lastly, I was thinking of bringing either Gorgeist or Mega Gardevoir, but Gorgeist is kind of overwhelmed by the Victini and the, the Nido King, and Mega Gardevoir deals with the Breloom, but he has Victini, which is resistant to both the Mega Gardevoir stabs. He has that scissor, which I do expect him to bring because, again, resists both of our stabs. Um, if Neo King is Scarf and outspeeds and one hit chaos with Sludge Wave, I don't want to risk that. Sucker Punch from Mega Absor has a ton to Mega Gardevoir after the Mega Evolves, so pretty much a tough, uh, pretty much tough to justify bringing Mega Gardevoir this week. As for the Pokemon I predict my opponent to bring, I predict him to bring the Victini, I'm expecting Thunderous Therian, I'm expecting Scizor, I'm expecting Mecha Absol, 
I'm expecting Needle King, and I'm expecting either his Vaporeon, <clears throat> Vaporeon, Grand Bowl, or the Miltank. But more likely, I'm expecting the Vaporeon just so he has a better switch into my Manaphy. So, those are my predictions. Um, and pretty much, I'm going to try to rebound from last week. Trying to go four and one after after five weeks here. My opponent is two and two. He's catching up, rising in the standing. So have to take back our momentum and try to get back on a winning note here. So until next time, my name is Anthony, aka Tone One One Four, and I'm going to catch you.